Hello everyone. Today we are going to explore good manufacturing practices in food industry. Now in our previous video we have studied about good manufacturing practices in pharmaceutical industry. If you haven't watched this, the video, the link is in the description. You can go and check it out. So moving forward to the GMPs in food industry. Now what is GMP? Now good manufacturing practices as we know are regulations that ensure food and the production of this food is under safe and hygienic condition, maintaining quality and reducing contamination risk. Now what is the purpose of including GMP in food industry? Because it is required to safeguard food safety, product quality and compliance with regulatory standards. Now second is facility hygiene. In order to produce the food, right? So we need a facility, hygienic facility, just to maintain the food quality, right? So the second comes, second important things that comes is facility hygiene. So first is the sanitation program. So regular cleaning and sanitization of equipment, surfaces and production areas are very important. Like for example, meat processing plants adhere to strict cleaning schedules using hot water and sanitizers to prevent listeria monocytosins contamination. Okay. Now second is pest control. It is used to prevent pests from entering food production areas. Examples, bakeries use insect traps and seal entry points to avoid salmonella contamination from pests. So these are some of the measures that are taken to maintain the hygiene in the facility. Okay. So second is our employee hygiene, which is as important as our facility. Okay. So the first one is personal hygiene practices. The people who are working, the employees of the industry, their personal hygiene practices are very important. So it ensures the workers to maintain cleanliness, like including uh, hand washing, use of gloves and protective gears. For example, dairy plant workers wash hands and wear gloves to avoid contaminating milk. Another aspect is health monitoring. Regular health checks to ensure employees do not bring diseases into the production environment. It's very important. For example, seafood facilities screen their workers to prevent norovirus contamination. This is a notorious microorganism, norovirus. To prevent it, health monitoring is very important especially occurs in the marine seafood, right? Now coming to our ingredient control. So in ingredient control, we have microbial testing. Now these raw ingredients are tested to ensure they are free of harmful microorganisms like E. coli from the ground beef. These are also tested before making the food, right? And before delivery to the foodborne diseases, okay? So, testing of E. coli is very important in beef. Next is supplier audits. Auditing suppliers to ensure they follow GMP and provide safe ingredients. For example, baby food manufacturers audit food suppliers to verify they meet safety standards. Baby foods, the foods that are important for the baby which are available widely in the market, need regular auditing or audit checks. Okay. Just to Ensure that they are following the good manufacturing practices in the food industry and how safety is it for the babies. Now coming to process control. Now here we come along the term HACCP which is hazard analysis and critical control points. What is it? It is used to identify critical points in the production process where contamination could occur. Like for example, canned food production lines monitor cooking temperatures to prevent Clostridium botulinum. We all know that Clostridium botulinum is responsible for food poisoning, right? So, canned food production, they what they do? They regularly check, they regularly monitor their canned food products that they are not contaminated with Clostridium botulinum. For this, they do it regular checkups. Another one is temperature control. So, managing temperatures during st storage and processing to prevent bacterial growth. 
For example, poultry plants store raw chicken below 4 degree Celsius and ensure proper cooking to prevent salmonella. This is also cause of a food poisoning. This mainly occurs in the chicken items. Okay, so they are stored below 4 degree Celsius. So this is how the whole process of food production is controlled. Now coming to the last, that is food testing or we can say the product testing. Whatever food industry has produced as a product, it needs to go under quality check, right? So product testing is very important. So microbial testing of the finished products. So testing finished products to ensure they are free from harmful microorganisms. Examples. Dairy companies test yogurt for listeria before distribution. Another one is self-life studies. Now conducting studies to ensure products remain safe throughout their self-life. Now what is the self-life? Self-life is the date before which the product can be used, right? So before the expiry date. So that is the self-life. How long the product can survive? On its own without contamination okay so that is the self life so self life studies what they do they show that the products remain safe throughout the self life for example juice manufacturers verify products stay free from yeast and mold during storage now this yeast and mold this fungus are very notorious types of microorganism they can occur anywhere okay just leave anything for a long period of time one or the other you will see there's a, there's a fungus growing. Okay. So, to keep these products uh, away from yeast and molds, juice manufacturers, they verify the products. Regular quality control checkups are done before passing it out into the market. Now, what comes in conclusion to us? Now, here we can conclude that GMP ensures food safety, protects consumers, and maintains product quality. Now, what are the takeaways? Adhering to GMP in all aspects of food production, for example, facility hygiene, employee practices, ingredient control, process monitoring, and product testing minimizes contamination risk and ensures compliance with safety standards. Okay, so this is all for today's video. Hope you all have understood today's topic. If you have any queries, feel free to comment. And for detailed notes of this video, follow our LinkedIn page. The link is in the description. If you want to learn about other topics in a simplified manner, comment the topic below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more such interesting microbiology topics. See you in our next video.